This has got to be a full time job keeping this, uh, this troll out tonight. I'm <laughs> <laughs> Yo Fluffs, how you all doing? I hope you're all doing well. I just want to apologize for the late show um, <laughs> while we were waiting for it to go on. We ran out of power. My wife did put power on yesterday, but it ran out somehow. So I just quickly drove and got power and then we had to wait for them to load it. But it's good to be here. Hopefully everybody's doing well. Uh, we got Jeff Conkal in, Michael Korn, PJ Krukshank and Discord in. How are you guys doing? Yo. All good, all good. Yeah. Full tank, full tank job while you're away keeping out the um the sock that comes up with this, this these um multitude of names. He, he's very inventive, I must say. There's a <laughs> there's a lot of McToon trolls around these days. Oh, what's that, yeah. I wonder why that is. Mm. Maybe because <laughs> we show him to be a total ignorant buffoon when it comes to uh, celestial navigation. Yeah, it could be something to do with that. Yeah, exactly. Um, by the way, the power is getting off at 11, so we're only going to have an hour and a half show tonight, which sucks. Uh, but what yeah. can we do? But we're here. But it's good to see you guys. How are you guys doing? So, yeah, all good. All good. A little tired today, but no, I'm just thinking, nothing like one of these shows to wake you up a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I see Mikey Smith is live mm. now. Oh. No doubt. About no the doubt. Coach, him out. Going about the shills again. Mm. Um, oh, unbelievable. Yeah. Mike, Mikey needs to cool down on that. He really does. I mean, I even commented to him to you yesterday about and I was fair with my comment, quite a long comment, saying, look, we love you and all that, but you need to chill out with it. With it, you're the only one telling the truth. Um, go out and do this, I'm out doing this. What about the rest of you? I'm the only one going out doing this. He's got plenty of time to do it. The peop the person is, is implying that isn't is you, Flats. No, he literally you, lost you, yesterday's you, show. He actually sp was talking about yeah. me. Even petrol, yeah. the bloody moron doesn't know that petrol means gasoline. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So, <laughs> yes. yeah. From as well, don't me. You know what annoys me though? You've got a full time job, flats. Yeah, um, and you still, and you've got a wife and kids to no, spot. No, but you know you what? Still you still know give what? your free time to give to get the truth no, out. No, you know there. what irritates me with that, guys? What mm. have I done to him? Nothing. You let him present and everything I, on your show. I times. have, I have been promoting his channel nonstop. Been yeah. inviting. He's been on here a few times to present. Mm -hmm. I have done absolutely bugger all to him and yet the moron wants to come and call me a shill Whoa. because I don't go and what because I debate and I talk about angles mm -hmm. <coughs> I mean for, for me like it, you should get him on and have him explain him he doesn't want to he, he's running away from me he ignores me well, yeah very, very cowardly behavior then isn't it? Yeah, it is definitely. yeah because, because if he's ready for truth <laughs> He wouldn't be the way he is now. Uh, the way he goes on about super chats, it sh super chats is just jealousy. He has got his super chats activated. His channel is monetized. So if he was getting the super chats in, is he going to deny them? Is he going to send them back? No. I'm sorry, you but I mean? sorry, but what's wrong with people getting super exactly. chats? Um, no. yeah. At the end of the day, this is still a job. It still takes a lot of my time, a lot of my effort to do this. And yes, yeah. I do require the money. If I didn't need the money, then I wouldn't have the super chats needed. But it really exactly. does help. It pays for my children's school fees. 
Mm-hmm. If I really mm-hmm. wanted to do this for money, I wouldn't be doing flat earth. That's what I'm saying. There's, there's People can go out and do practical things. Some people in flat earth might be doing a full-time job. They can't go out and do practical uh, things but, all the time. But you, you show demonstrations, you, talk, you show people the truth but, in your spare time while you're still holding down a job but, and looking after your family. Let, let me say this, though. If, if everybody would just start taking photos of stars, then where would we be? Exactly. Uh, all we'd have is pictures of stars. Yeah, but that's the thing. Uh, and I'm I'm sorry, Mikey, like, but they're just pictures of stars that you speculate. It's correlations. About. And yeah. that, we got into that mess with globe in first place, with claiming distances and yeah. the planets and stars, uh, sun. Yeah. Sorry, you know, I mean, we've been there yeah. before. Like, and going out to looking at stars is not an experiment; it's an observation. And the best you do, Mikey, is demonstrate you do not have experiments on your channel whatsoever none whatsoever yeah so so that's just a bit of a call out for mikey if you want to come and talk and actually face me like a man you know where to find mm. me and i say let's move on to our discussion tonight because it's Absolutely. sad i really had respect for mikey but after the last stream you had it was so disgusting i actually felt sick i couldn't watch more than five minutes i had to turn it off i mean he's with his he was nearly headbutt in the camera I mean, I, I felt like headbutting him back. <coughs> mm. It was that bad. Right. I had to turn it off myself. So I'm just going to say hi to everybody in the chat. So I'm not going to go through everybody's names tonight because of the time restraint. But I just want to say thanks, everybody, for coming. It's good to see you. And Richard G, thank you for becoming a King Rooster. You rock. And Godzilla37, mm. wow, thank you very much for 10 gifted memberships. <laughs> That's insane. Oh, thank <laughs> you very much. I really yeah, appreciate yeah. it. And I appreciate everybody here and everybody's support. You guys yeah. rock. Your okay. wife got another one, and she got another gifted one. Evelyn <laughs> <laughs> got one as well. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, guys, you must see I've been showing on Element late today. I'm getting so much triggered emails from McToon fans, literally just swearing at me and nothing else. <laughs> it shows you we're getting to them. And this is what I love about the Celestial Navigation argument. It is literally separating the wheat. This is why we get like Jaron and Mikey now going against Celestial Navigation because it's showing their true colors. They don't want it to prove a flat earth. They want to be the people, you know, the main people. Well, Everybody look I, at I was me. was Mikey going to buy a center bar and get a section and go out and sell another when he hadn't looked into none of theory behind it, like, you know? It's so simple. The the principle behind a sextant requires it to be flat. Just because people draw it on a sphere doesn't make it a sphere. The math created, the measurements, the trigonomic function is flat. There's yeah. nothing they can do about that. Uh, it's killing them. Yeah, it's <laughs> killing them. It's just killing them. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, we've got 97 votes so far. Using flat earth to explain celestial navigation is a concession of flat earth. Yes, 33%, no, 67%. Wow. I would say yes, it is, because why would you need to, like, if you guys haven't watched part one, please go and watch. Why would you need to explain celestial navigation on a flat earth if it's not flat? Exactly. Uh, McToon ain't got a challenge, mic drop. Nope. No. He has not it whistles past gain, yeah, elevation angles, like it whistles straight past that. He makes it impossible to, to to claim that 10 grand, so it's not a challenge at all. He's not actually putting up 10 grand. It's he's putting up the thing. He's made it physically, the, the steps he's placed there is impossible to be achieved. You know what I mean? Because he's just going to claim, oh, no, no, this is globe. No, no, this is globe. You see, this one's got a globe picture, so that's for globe, you understand? So no mm. matter what you're going to do, he's going to say you use the globe. And that's dishonesty. Because he can't right. accept the steps are based on a flat earth. How can you even take a ball, cut it up and stretch it out to a, to, to like a square map? How, how could you even make that work in any way, you know? Exactly. It would be all weird and parts missing and stretched areas and, you know. <laughs> Today I was watching, uh, Sean Hawkins is doing live streams on me again, guys. And he, he was doing on last night's one and some parts of the McToon uh, debate. And it was so funny. Every time he said something, 
He says, I don't understand. And literally after I explain it, then this guy comes and explains it. <laughs> it says the same thing I say. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. It, 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 it told me today, it says, our oh, game video is wrong. <laughs> <laughs> well, he would say that because awesome. this guy is showing it to be flat and uh, yeah. Mr. Yeah. Sean Hawkins can't accept that. I mean, how many times last night when he was exampling the, the, the flat part of it, he had no problems, but when he was exampling the, 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 um, the global part of it, he was over oh, the problem with, with it with this with this here is this the problem with this is here there was no problems with the flat but plenty of problems with the globe exactly all he mm -hmm. did was bring up problems for the globe that's that was it yeah mm -hmm. okay you guys ready to go on to the part two yeah man let's do this oh it's muted sorry two of our process is going to be called finding the object that we shot right? The geographic position of the sun. So find the sun is a good way to think about it. So when we made that observation of the sun, we were sitting on our boat. Our boat was, you know, out here somewhere floating along in the ocean. And we measured an altitude to the sun. We can put that altitude aside for a while. What we need to know now is where was the sun at the time of observation? If you remember the name... Remember step one was measure the apparent altitude, guys. Is, is this the guy who draws it all on a flat and then draws it again on a ball? Yes, yeah. this is the same guy from, yeah. from last night. Yeah. yeah, you went here last night. No, I went here. Yeah. Definitely I've go watch it. it. Big flags it. Yeah. You might want to go watch it, Michael. It was epic. Oh, well. <laughs> right. yeah. But yeah, it's literally step one is take an apparent angular measurement. So you're literally using angles two straight lines to vertex based on the horizon as he was saying which is the horizontal baseline the surface of earth and now step two is once you've taken your straight line measurement now we have to figure out where the geographical position on the surface of earth is for that luminary why do you need that well so you would know the distance correct yeah hmm aim of that spot directly beneath the sun or if you were standing there the sun was directly overhead what we're looking for is the geographic position of the sun at the moment of observation so for us we were shooting this in the afternoon we shot the sun you know so if we were to represent it this way the sun would be maybe right there that would be its geographic position, position. we need to find it precisely we need to find it precisely the trouble with geographic position is that it's not just latitude and longitude or, or distance and range kind of thing. We need to define a couple other terms to go along with this. And first things first. You heard that guys, the geographic position is not just latitude and longitude. Hmm. Where do that works? Because hmm. as far as we know, a geographical position literally can be stated by latitude and longitude, correct? Yeah. Absolutely. If I give my latitude and longitude for my house, you would know yeah. my actual <laughs> where the yeah. position for my house is. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. But there's a certain way to get it. That's what he's trying to explain. The latitude of the geographic position, that's pretty easy. How far north or south of the equator is that spot? It's known as declination. Mm hmm. Declination is the latitude of the spot directly beneath the sun or the latitude of the GP. If you think about the sun in particular, over the course of the year, the sun's declination is going to change. So for example, on the equinox, when we have equal days and equal nights, that's what equinox means, the declination is zero. It's at mm -hmm. the equator. Okay, let me tell you, I've actually done this for McToon before, guys. He gave me um, two location a location to try and get using the sun and i did it for him too bad the guy runs away from this this is where his uh, two sons came into because i actually did the math on the flat earth by the way <laughs> and i got his location that he said you're not going to get 
let's see if I can quickly get it. It's a short one. Did you get a pat on back and a well done, or did you just get a stuff you? I got to ignore me and then obfuscate to, oh, why do you have two sons? <laughs> yeah. Was it a video or a, I think it was a video. Okay. It was a quick one. It wasn't too long. I think it's called two sons. But yeah, that's all they do. They make claims and then when you show them wrong, they just ignore it like you've never debunked it. You know what I mean? Like, just play dumb. Right. Uh, yeah, he uses Microsoft Edge Guard because um, Chrome doesn't seem to work when he's streaming. <laughs> I, I use Microsoft, mine uses Microsoft Edge now and again. Just, usually by mistake, but it still works for me. Now, I have to use uh, Edge because if I use Chrome, then it uh, buffers for some reason. Oh, right. I've got right, Adblock yeah. on there, but. Yeah, then it buffers. Anyway, so this is him. So no triangulation. Also, you use linear angles instead of asymptotic angles. Globe confirmed. Since you are quite confused about triangulation, it involves tr solving a triangle. Three sides, three angles. If you are going to claim triangulation, what are the lengths of the three sides? I'll wait for the excuses. Well, anyway. See, I'm showing the declinations. This is what the guy's explaining now. Notes, the declinations I'm explaining is based on, what's that, azimuthal equidistant uh, projection, correct? So it's explaining in summertime, the springtime, and the winter, you know, summer, whatever. So this is the declinations when the sun is at the equator, zero. When the sun is closer to the north, it would be 23.45. And when the sun is furthest from the north, 23.5 minus. Okay, so it's plus and minus, just like he said. Note that I gave the different distances based on, what's this, the trigonomic function using triangles. And the guy literally, well, I think it's gonna show in this one. Because I think it was more than one. But I think it was this one where I said, okay. So he says, so this is his excuse when I showed it to him, guys, because I got it correct. So the sun is simultaneously at many different elevations. Ha 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 ha. Breathe. Ha ha ha. Hyperlating. That's his rebuttal. Yeah. To me, literally doing what he says, I couldn't get done. Mm -hmm. I gave his exact position based on this, guys, of his friend. Like and a little kiddo, you've nicked his jam sarnies off him, like. <laughs> exactly. And then I said, even on the globe, it shows ref their refraction, so it wouldn't be in the same position based on their globe, even. Well, he ignored that as well, so. Weird how that works. But I did another one where I, I gave him the actual positions where he asked me to get it. And I think it was like after the fourth attempt to find he, he, uh, answered me and says yes i got the positions right and that was it but that's the declinations guys it can be done using flat earth as well just drawing on a globe doesn't make it globe related in the northern hemisphere summer the declination increases until around june 21st where it reaches its solstice where the sun stands still and then begins to what the sun stands still so the sun is the one moving well done mate absolutely he's right there, he's mm -hmm. right there. Mm -hmm. change in declination to the winter summer solstice and back and forth so this declination changes it doesn't change very quickly but it does change so we can look up the declination of the sun for the time of observation mm. likewise we need to find the longitude of the geographic position as well looking at a globe there's no easy way to figure that out but like yeah, you can't use it on a globe, correct? Because it's simply based on your time to Greenwich Meridian. <laughs> That's how it's based. That's what your longitude's based on. So you're taking it to the Greenwich Meridian time as your reference to either plus or minus it to know your longitude based on the grid. Not globe related. Latitude and longitude, we're going to rely on Greenwich ah. as our kind of main spot. So if that's Greenwich, England, meridian, yeah. that's the zero longitude on earth mm -hmm. if you go west of it you're going to hit the geographic position um, and that's its longitude 
The only difference though for celestial navigation is that geographic position's longitude, otherwise known as Greenwich hour angle, mm -hmm. or- That would be over the azimuthal plane, people. So this is when I asked the globe. So the guy taking the observation is on the same azimuthal plane as the geographical position of the star or sun or moon. Why? Because that's how you get your GHA. You need to know your time to get your longitude on the azimuthal plane. Same plane, guys. And you guys can talk in any time you want. If you have anything that's just not clear. Okay, not a problem. Actually, it's this. I'm going to quickly show. The azimuth will give us the direction of the GP from the observer's position. This explains why measuring the altitude and azimuth are the first steps in determining the position of celestial navigation. Let's look at the azimuthal plane, guys. Okay, this is really bad. Maybe they've got something. It's actually got better drawing in. I can read what it says. But anyway, the azimuthal plane, that whole plane is the azimuthal plane. It goes around would be great if they actually had a one that we can read properly but you get the point I think there we go this might work there's the azimuth you see they take it from the zero the green which is in zero and it's going west so you can work out on the azimuthal plane that's all it's explaining uh, Gleam hey a uh, commenter English say Greenwich oh. for Greenwich Mean Time. Yeah, Greenwich. Commoner, Greenwich. <laughs> yeah, Greenwich. I, I are a South African boor, so I will say Greenwich, okay? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's the so, same with most like, most towns like that in um, England. If they've got a W, I-C-K, you, you usually miss out the W. Sorry, sorry. Um, sorry, but uh, since when have you guys not watched those old cartoons where the witches are always green? Come on, guys. <laughs> <coughs> Not bent, exactly. GHA only ever increases to the west. There's no east. There's no west. It just increases to the west from zero to 360. Mm -hmm. So for, for an example here, what we're saying is that uh, the geographic position of the sun is, you know, this far to the west of Greenwich. What about if it was right here? What if the geographic position was right there? Goes you around, can't just say, all right, it's that far there. east of Greenwich. Nope. No, no, west. no. You go from Greenwich all the way around the earth to get the Greenwich hour angle that way. So that's hmm. Over the azimuthal plane, the, sequel, the circle of equal altitude, the same horizontal plane. Hmm. What's the difference between longitude and Greenwich hour angle is that Greenwich hour angle increases from zero to 360. Mm -hmm. There's no east and west. It always just goes to the west. So why is it called hour angle or GHA? What does that mean? Why isn't it just called longitude? Well, if you were to take the North Pole or what's known in celestial nav terms as the elevated pole, the closer one to your ship, you can actually create this angle that they're talking about. <laughs> that is GHA. The azimuthal plane's angular measurement. Wow. So that's taken from the center of the azimuthal plane, guys. You know, sort of like two straight lines. Mm -hmm. And it has an opening having an angular measurement. You know, what is longitudes based on as well? I don't know, an angle, a degree? <laughs> but, oh. They're actually called degrees, aren't they? <laughs> exactly, it's degree for a reason. Uh, yeah. Greenwich, our angle. <clears throat> it's measured in degrees and minutes, just like other any other type of angle. So for this step, we're interested in knowing the declination and the GHA 
of the GP, the geographic position of the sun. Where do we do that? We look it up in the Nautical Almanac. It's tricky, there's some nuance to it, but big picture, we're looking for the declination and the GHA of that spot. Why do we care about that? Well, if we know that spot and we know the angle that we observed it in step one, we can do everything. We can figure out how far we were away from it. We can do angles and distances, etc., cetera, to, uh, to help us figure out our position. So completing the triangle, which McToon says you don't use. Well done, mate. Uh, yeah, it's very simple. This is where the 90 minus uh, the measured altitude angle would be of his HO, so we can get a distance to the, the ground position on the same azimuthal plane. So you would get the actual latitude and longitude of the star or sun or moon or whatever you are um, observing. That's how you're going to know your circle of equal altitude so you know where you are to get a line of position and if you do more than one sight, a fix. I love how the globe is only based on angles and triangles and horizontals and straight lines. Everything that's opposite of what a globe is. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It's true. It's absolutely true. But you see, that's how they fool these people. Let me draw it on a globe and call that a 90 degree angle. Where yeah. it literally is not an angle. <laughs> In real life, it's a 90 degree angle. Measured. But when you take it and draw it on a globe, you're just drawing it on a globe. You're not actually got it as a 90 degree on the globe. Yeah. <laughs> Can't be a negative on the Exactly. So, in order to do that, we've got to find the declination and GHA of the geographic position. We'll go to the Nautical Almanac for that. Yay. So, the first thing we'll do in the Nautical Almanac is flip to the day that we made our observation. We made our observation on the 29th of May. So, there's three days worth of data in this table, but we're on the 29th of May. And if we look at that page, we'll notice that all of the information for the sun no circle jerk the math is euclidean he's drawing it as non-euclidean to appease your globe belief note the charts that he's got on screen as well two-dimensional flat you see that compass rose like the protractor that's two-dimensional angle measurements degrees on a flat surface <laughs> Sun and the moon is on one particular page and here's the Sun information for Saturday 29 May here's the Greenwich hour angle and the declination for the time of observation in hours so if it was midnight GMT the GHA would be 180 and the declination would be 21 and some change we made our observation at, at 20 there 07 we go. 30 GMT on the 29th of May. So if I look down here at, uh, at 20 hundred hours, I'll zoom in a little bit so you can see better. Oh, sorry about that. Any questions before we go on? No, it's all good. It's all good. I can pull off the GHA and declination for the time of observation. Uh, cocaine, yes, I've actually gone through Nautical Almanacs a few times, mate. This isn't my first rodeo actually talking about celestial navigation, too. You know what irritates me about these globe trolls? <laughs> he just nods his head like he knows what he's talking about. Yes, I do know what I'm talking about. That's why I wouldn't be talking about it. Uh, but the very same clown who's telling you that you've never done it has also never done it. Exactly. But like I said, exactly. I And don't... they just open their mouth like they know what they're talking about. Mm -hmm. But don't you open think it's... But don't you guys find it odd I'm able to say what the guy's going to say before he says it? Is it exactly. That's a bit that weird is. if you don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's because the guy in the video doesn't even know too. <laughs> <laughs> they open the mouth and let the belly rumble. I mean, you know what's irritating about these guys? Oh, you don't own a sextant. 
So I don't need to own a sextant. I live in a bloody bush. Yeah, and they are sitting on one every day, eh? I mean, I know how a Ferrari's engine works. Do I need to own a Ferrari to know how it works? No. No. Yeah. Really, it's really idiotic, guys. Get Just with it. Coming from ignorance, that's all. Yeah. It. The, the, these guys have never seen gravity <clears throat> or experimented with it or dealt with it or manipulated it, but they know how it works. You know what I mean? I mean, these these angles, these degrees, is based on flat Earth navigation. You claiming its globe is just you claiming its globe, okay? The whole principle requires horizontal parallels with straight line angles. They only draw it on a globe because they believe it's a globe. It doesn't make these angles a sphere. An angle will always be two straight lines meeting at a vertex. No matter how hard you don't want it to be that way. Get it? If it's 120 degrees, you can go and draw a 120 degree angle and what would it give you? Two straight lines meeting at a vertex. Not a circle. The problem is, we didn't observe the sun directly at 8 o'clock, 2000 GMT. We observed it at 2007 point and, and a half, 27, 2007 and 30 seconds. So what I'll do first is I'll write down the whole values of GHA and declination. The GHA value is 120 degrees, 37.8. That only accounts for the 20 hours, 20 mm -hmm. We have another seven minutes and 30 seconds to account for. So if you look at the rate of change between hour 20 and hour 21, you can see that the GHA changes by about 15 degrees per hour. The Earth. Oh, 15 degrees per hour, just like the sun's moving 15 degrees an hour since he's taking a sun sight. Mm. Mm. Yeah, mental. weird. And, and <laughs> what's weird about that, it's the sun moving over the Earth. So its uh -huh. geographical position over the Earth is changing 15 degrees an hour. The sun moving just as observed. Exactly. Earth turns in 24 hours. There's 360 degrees in a circle. So each hour, the sun is going to move about 15 degrees. In terms of declination, you can see that it doesn't really change that much. So you could theoretically do a mental interpolation and say, okay, well. Yeah, the declination is just changing but between 0 0.4. As you can see, the D is the declination which is equal to 0 0.4. I could have had money, somebody would have popped in chat and said, thanks, Bob. <laughs> I could have had money on it. Uh, yeah, yeah, when they had oh, the 15 degrees. Oh, there we degrees. go, yeah. Oh, yeah. 15 degrees, yeah, it was bound to happen, wasn't it? It's sad, Spoken really. Spoken like a true clown. Yeah. yeah. I'm sorry, every time someone says thanks, Bob, they're either very ignorant or they're just dishonest. Yeah. Cheers, Bob. Or both. <laughs> 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 well, at 20. Yeah, Bob. Pr by the way, guys, when you bring up Tanks Bob, you proving that there's no Coriolis. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Morons. That's how stupid these guys are. 100 hours, the declination is north 21, 44.7. And at 21 hours, it's north 21, 45.0. Doesn't change that much. You can probably estimate it. But. If you want to calculate it for reals, look at this little D number here. Mm. That's the rate of change of declination. So we'll use that when we go later to the back of the book to make our correction. Yeah. So once we've got this information written down, we'll kind of uh, you know write down the declination and the GHA. And then I want to ask guys, when you write down these things, are you writing down degree angles or are you writing down spheres? I would say the former, the angle. Oh, degree angles, yeah. And uh, what are the degree angles again? Two straight lines meeting at a vertex, correct? Mm -hmm. You can literally go and you can draw these angles out on paper, and they will always have two straight lines meeting at a vertex. Where do that works? It's all over that paper. Mm -hmm. 
A values. And then we're going to go to the back of the book, the increments and corrections table. The increments and corrections allow us to account for that extra seven minutes. The extra seven minutes and 30 seconds that the sun was moving since the whole value of 20 hundred hours was in there. So in seven minutes and 30 seconds, the sun is going to change its GHA by one degree, 52.5 minutes. And with that little D number, that value correction, we simply Minutes look up the 0.4 yeah. that we wrote down, and the declination is going to change by 0 0.1 minutes over the course of that 7 minutes and 30 seconds. Uh -huh. So an angular change in GHA here and an angular change in declination there. here mm -hmm. needs to be added or sometimes subtracted for declination where you are. to the tabulated values here. So again, Remember what you said with the declination, it comes on the season and where you are on your position above the equator. And that's where you find the little D number, the rate of change of declination. So first step is write these down. Second step is correct them for increments and corrections. And then you'll get a total correction that way. Mm -hmm. So we'll go to the whiteboard just to write all this stuff down. So when it comes to right uh, Danish, I'm humble when I say these things I don't understand, but I am going to be literally plain flat out. How can I put it to you? How can I put this in a, in a nice way, guys? School you <laughs> on things if I understand it. Mm. <laughs> and Robert LeFleur, once you get to Z, you've got to run out of letters. So what names you got to make up then? So I, I want to know from these these uh, globies. Can any one of them show me what I've said is wrong? Instead of just telling me now, nah, are oh, you wrong? Show me where I've been wrong. That's and would anyone want to get on the show and show it? That yeah. would be cool. Yeah, yeah. that'd be cool. Like cell navigation. Yeah. Um. I'm literally telling you what he's explaining before he explains it to you. Doesn't that tell you something, Danish? Huh? Doesn't that tell you something? Weird how I'm telling things, like I said to McToon, that he says doesn't exist in Celestial Navigation, yet we're going through those exact things from someone who teaches navigation. After he says they don't talk about it, it's not uh, part all, of it. all these YouTube videos of people who actually do sell nav or uh, teach it, they're not real, they're just lying. Go on. You know, if it disagrees with a globe, then it's, you're lying. Exactly. Pathetic. It's crazy. Writing this stuff down, usually what I'll do is I'll write declination and I'll take the tabulated value for the day in question. I'll write down the little D number. That's for the rate of change yeah. of declination from hour to hour. Since we have to account for those extra seven minutes and 30 seconds, we need to do this. Plus and back one. in the increments and corrections table, the little D number correction was 0.1. So I have a total declination of north 2144.8. How do I know to add? Well, the rate of change of declination in the tables is increasing because it's springtime in the northern hemisphere. But you can also just look at the tables and see that it's increasing. So changes need to be added. For Greenwich hour angle, I have my tabulated value of 120.37.8. In the increments and corrections table, I had 152.5. Mm -hmm. Do I add or subtract that? I always add GHA because GHA is always west of Greenwich. Yep, always adding. Uh, hey, WCS, yeah. Um, he can come on the show if he wants to. The problem with these idiots, they are just keyboard warriors and uh, they don't have the kahunas to actually come and defend oh. their bullshit. We saw what happens when they usually do come. Remember okay. when that guy came on told me I don't know about thermodynamics and okay. his open statement was thermodynamics is not about entropy? Mm. Yeah. I yeah. They are thinking just in case they decide to come in. Yeah. So it's very simple, guys. You can come in. You can really come and talk about it if you want to teach me celestial navigation. I'm confident enough to say, um, I think I know what's going on by now. Adam, okay. as it an Adam, mate, you're not That's debating. <laughs> uh, does this guy even know what an Adam is? 
<laughs> you didn't give an argument to for me to be able to attack your character instead of the argument. So therefore, not an add-on, and I'm going to say you're a moron, not because of add-on, of fact. Fact. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's always increasing. It never, never... I literally feel like people are getting dumber every day. I, yeah. I, I, yeah. Have That's you guys true. realized this? Yeah, I was just I was yeah. just watching someone on YouTube earlier about that movie Idiocracy. It's right. Uh, it's, it's, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it's it's like the more the truth comes out, the dumber the lie becomes. You yeah. know, and all the ones you know spitting the lies, they are part of the lies. So they they become dumber with the lies. You know, mm -hmm. it's crazy. Yeah. I still don't get it, Danish Boog. You are an idiot, man. You're claiming an Adam. You're not in a debate. You're not having yeah. an argument. It's not an Adam. It's just a plain fact. Okay. No okay. Yeah. Let's see if I can explain this again. Ad, ad hominem fallacy requires you to have an argument where mm. I, instead of rebutting the argument, insult your character. You get it? You didn't have an argument. There was nothing to rebut. So I couldn't add harm you because you didn't have an argument to present. Get it? Now the fact you don't know what an ad hominem is, and the fact you still think it's an hominem even after I explained it twice now, is fact that you are a moron. <laughs> That's not an ad hominem. That is a fact. <laughs> Sorry, I did not think we were laughing. This guy is... <laughs> never changes course. So when I do my math, I, I tend to forget degrees. So that's why I write down 12190.3, which I- Oh, now he says that's not an ad hominem. Okay, this guy's just trolling. Let's get on with the video. Convert to 12230.3 because there's 60 minutes in an hour. Math is your weak point here. If you mess up anything here, it's gonna screw up your whole site. So it's worth double checking. Um, double check in your process there. So step two is now complete. We found the geographic position of the sun. We know we're out there somewhere. We found the declination and the GHA, the Greenwich hour angle of the sun. That'll allow us to move on to the next step where we're gonna construct some triangles and then further solve them. <laughs> so, so far- What did he say? Construct some triangles and further solve them, correct? <laughs> uh, let, let's just go back just maybe a few seconds just to make sure that's exactly what he said um, just <laughs> we found the declination and the GHA the Greenwich hour angle of the Sun that'll allow us to move on to the next step where we're gonna construct some triangles and then further solve them <laughs> so so far in step one we observed the Sun we corrected it for three things and we have a height observed that we can use in step two, we found the geographic position of the sun, its declination and its longitude or Greenwich hour angle. We're gonna fall back on our very first discussion in this video about geometry and triangles <laughs> for step three, which is to build a spherical triangle. <laughs> build a spherical triangle after <laughs> you using a triangle. This is gonna get funny. Wow. It it's already hilarious. Oh. You just take a triangle and you plump it out in the middle. <laughs> and you start to stuff it in. There. Wow. Yeah. Rounded, rounded, we know a rounded, couple of points rounded. of this triangle. Let's quickly see what it says. Triangle. We've got the GP of the sun. That's kind of. I, I think let's draw what the points are on, on um. In paint or something. How's that, guys? So we can show how it actually looks. Because he's probably going to try to draw on a um, a globe, correct? Mm. Okay, we're going to give the just give the star quickly with this. Okay, let's see what he says. Like our anchor point, it's got a declination and a GHA. We also know the North Pole. That's up there. It's a fixed point, and it's our elevated pole. Finally, we've got our ship's position. We don't know where we are, otherwise we would be not doing celestial navigation if we were just using our GPS. But a good navigator is always going to maintain a dead reckoning position. A dead reckoning position is a deduced position where you think you are based mm -hmm. on your course and your speed. It could be based on... Old 
That's why when you use your dead reckoning, you're usually using the, looking at your charts to see where you have traveled before and mm -hmm. trying to make sure you're traveling in that same path. Because you still I have things to contend. Because you still have things to contend with, like drift of the ocean. Because there are sea currents that pull you around and push you around, and sometimes you might have taken a bit of a wrong turn. So it's very important. I mean, Polaris makes sense, right? Polaris makes sense, but saying North Pole doesn't make sense because they don't even know where to put that place. Yeah, you, you know, can't they make really... up a spot. Sure. And, yeah, and for real, it's the, it's it's Polaris. It's the only thing that that's on top of the place they're talking about, no matter what. Yeah, I agree. You should have actually said Polaris or yeah, or North. Yeah, well, North Pole is still easy for people to understand. Uh, yeah, but it's drawing yeah. a spherical triangle into the ball. Uh huh. Oh. Uh, Swamp Boy, thank you very much for your five dollar super chat. Really, really appreciate it. That sounds a lot like a process using triangles. Exactly. <laughs> it's weird how they just use triangles for this. It's really, really weird. Uh, oh yeah, by the way, guys, thanks for coming. Please do hit the likes and share the show if you haven't already. Because it does help to get the show out to a wider audience. You guys are How really, really appreciated. <laughs> but it's good to I, see you guys. I, I'm bending my head down and clicking like now. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, Polaris moves, but its relative position stays the same. So it will yeah, always, always be always the, the same. same place. It's just our perception. Yeah. old information from yesterday or the day before, but you always have some idea of where you were. And so in our case, our dead reckoning position was at um, a, a latitude of 32 degrees north mm -hmm. and a longitude, that's the symbol for longitude, lambda, of 80 degrees west. Yeah, why is it longitude, guys? Why is, why, why is longitude lambda, guys? Maybe that's got to do with light. You know, uh, <clears throat> the movement of the sun and relative to the earth. So I didn't know where I was exactly, but I had a good idea. 3280. That's where we were on that day, on Saturday. So you had your latitude and longitude. Congratulations. So you can follow your, your dead reckoning plot and find to see if you're still going your uh, plotted, your line of sight that you had. Because remember you set your, um, you set your, your line of position and the dead reckoning is just there to make sure you're keeping on your line of position. Yeah, 29th of May at 20.07.30 GMT. That was my best guess. Uh, Aaron, I've got the screenshots. I just haven't sent them yet because I first want to ask Vicky and them if it's fine if I send it. He's not talking to. Talking to PJ. But I'll tell you something, Aaron. You got some nerve turning up here, mate. Mm-hmm. Mm. Well, well, all right. I, I just, I just realised there was a comment there. By the way, to... guys, he said we deleting, deleting comments. Um, I went on his video earlier and I see that my comment's still there. I see a lot of people's comments still there, so no one's deleting comments. Just yeah, Aaron. Com yeah, yeah just Aaron, listen, listen to this, Aaron. Mom! Mom! <laughs> <laughs> Do you know why she's not answering, um, Aaron? That side, like, perhaps, live with me, he's, trick. Because, <laughs> it, perhaps it's because he's not clicking the show all comments thing, you know, they filter out a lot on YouTube and stuff, you know, he had to click the all comments stuff, you know, so he can see them all again. It might be one of the ones that's not showing to him. For some but reason. no, but like the guy makes false claims on deduces huh. what our wives and partners uh, think of the whole thing. Yeah. He doesn't know them from a bar of soap, but he has the audacity to say what they think and what they, everything. And he lies right. to say Michael mm -hmm. lives with his mom. Can I ask why he's sent the message to PJ when it was me that said about it yesterday? I think he's scared of you, Vicky. I'll tell you why, Vicky. Is you why you a germ. Why her, her, what her chapters were. I'll happily send you more screenshots. Yeah, there was definitely there was seven, there was three there was three comments, Ivan, and there's definitely two of them we can't see. Yeah. Anyway, let's move on to what you're saying. I just think this guy's got a real obsession with. Uh, 
us for some reason. And it's not healthy, mate. No, definitely not. And take my name out of your mouth. <laughs> yeah, and take my mum's name out of your mouth as well, mate. So I do actually have a spot there, and it's called my dead reckoning position, or uh, what I can do is I can kind of tweak that a little bit to turn it into what's known as an assumed position for mm -hmm. math purposes. But to start out with, we've got our, our dead reckoning position. So this is our latitude, you know, right there is our latitude, our distance north of the equator. But our longitude is actually very important in this case. So longitude is an angular distance west or east of Greenwich. So longitude is west or east, east and west. But Greenwich hour angle is only west, right? So if I kind of figure out my longitude here, so I've written down my lambda for longitude, I can kind of come up with another angle that's going to be helpful as we like build a triangle. <laughs> build a triangle. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, let's build triangles, why don't you, and then put it on a sphere for some odd reason. Then it's not a triangle. Yeah, you say good evening, David Bonner. How you doing, man? Hey, hey, I, I mean, is he trying to make the cosmic egg happen inside a circle? <laughs> but, but note what he's doing here. Lambda. That would be an angular measurement, correct? Calculation. How is he getting an angular calculation without having two straight lines? Well, it's, it's impossible, isn't it? Without because straight with, for an angle to be uh, measured, uh, calculated or measured, you're required to have the same opening. If it doesn't have the same opening, it's not an angle measurement. No. Speak. And that angle is kind of the difference between GHA <laughs> and my longitude right here, <clears throat> this angle right there. Why is that important to know? Well, if ultimately I'm building a triangle between the GP, myself, and the North Pole, right? If I let's quickly draw that triangle, guys. <laughs> wow. <laughs> let's, let's draw that triangle quickly. That, drawing a triangle. Aesthetical bloody triangles. It's not a triangle, babe. It's a pregnant triangle. Yeah, exactly. It's, that's what they call it's, they're spherical triangles. There's no such thing as a spherical triangle. <laughs> spherical excess. Crap. <laughs> so, he's building a triangle, guys. The GP of the star and us, correct? So you'll have mm -hmm. three angles. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. Let's let's see. Let's carry on with these uh showing triangles that apparently doesn't exist in Celestial Navigation McToon. <coughs> I build that triangle. It's very similar in principle to that lighthouse. We built a triangle, you know, kind of up and down this way for the lighthouse. We're just kind of flopping it on its side, but we're using the same principle. If we can build a triangle, and use some angles and some sides, we can solve the rest of the triangle and help <laughs> us deduce our position. Ooh, would that be triangulation? Using angles to get a distance. So a trigonomic function called triangulation using a triangle. McToon, what did McToon tell me again? There's no triangles in celestial navigation. Nobody does. <laughs> And most of them say it, don't they? Nobody, yeah, nobody does uh, triangulation. Nobody uses trigonometry. No. Weird. You have to say it, though, because if they admit it, then it's goodbye, bar left. Mm hmm. So this same triangle as, right uh, here. Hmm? <coughs> just same as reinventing um, what level means. Yeah, they're just trying to say, let's make level follow the earth curve surface which totally contradicts what level means by the way uh ferris furfa if he's making a horizontal triangle he's claiming that this distance from the gp of the star on the same azimuthal plane as the north pole or polaris 
and the the observer all are on the same circle of equal altitude on a flat baseline plane you know that horizontal would mean let's say this is 3,000 miles you can figure out the distance to that would be longer because it's <laughs> never mind let's just carry on this is crazy <laughs> it's just flat in other words <laughs> represents uh, a connection between my dead reckoning position the geographic position of the sun and the north pole so knowing this blue angle hey duncan yeah exactly hey mctune this guy is using triangles <laughs> angle right here is you're not allowed to call him mctune anymore Oh yeah, I'm not allowed to. It's MC2. MC2. <laughs> Sorry, I'm still sticking with McClown. Yeah, me too. Yeah, I think, yeah. McClown think of the clowns. It's more apt. They don't deserve to be titled Anything. MC. I mean, you saw the debate we had. The guy literally was caught contradicting himself left, right and center. Lying straight on stream by saying, Oh, you, you, your citations don't agree with you when I got on screen literally saying triangulation and trying Did he get angry? Sorry? Did he get angry? Yeah, he got so he got a bit triggered. Always. Nice. Same stuff. Telling me Same all stuff. my citations don't agree with me while I got it on screen saying exactly what I'm saying. A bit like we fight the fat earth. Mm -hmm. He's definitely, he's definitely make cringe. He's very cringe. <laughs> McMason. <laughs> Uh, 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 if there is anybody who lives with his mum, there's that, your man. That's him. That is your dude. All I've got to <laughs> say is if you've got a grown man with a whole bunch of toys in his room, you got to be a bit skeptic. Right. Build a triangle. I need to know some legs and some sides in order to do that. This is known as local hour angle, or mm. LHA. So if you look at that, you can say that LHA is equal to GHA minus Lambda. longitude. LHA is equal to GHA minus longitude. Whatever's left is LHA. This only applies in the Western Hemisphere, in the Western Hemisphere. If you're in the Eastern Hemisphere... Fazai. Fazai. Yeah. Did you present citations on that stream? Yes, yes, a whole bunch. Right, so, Circle Jerk of Enormous Proportion says, present your citation on a live stream. It yeah. already has. I already yeah. have, yeah. And Theta Paradigm says he reviewed all flat citations, epic fail. Um, him saying, look, yeah, it says triangles, doesn't mean what I say it says, is not reviewing anything. It just means he's denying what's written in the citation not hard to understand when i bring up a citation where they teach children to do celestial navigation or uh, people and they talk about sakatoa okay as a trigonometric function that they use just like he's doing now by the way doesn't mean oh he felt badly yeah he felt badly doesn't mean i'm wrong it means they wrong he's wrong because he said no But yeah, it's really bad. Look at the <clears> poll. <throat> How's the poll going, guys? Using uh, flat just earth. Let you know, flat as I'd have banned Aaron. Ah, well, good riddance. It won't keep Vicky's mouth at uh, Vicky's name at. Yeah. No, the fact is, I mean, you said keep. She said she did keep her name at mouth, but she said that after you 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 you, you <clears> said what you had to say. So she would said what she had to say. Then she said. So you can't use right. that as a contradiction when it wasn't. Aaron, you're a you're a knob, right? <laughs> Please, for crying out that? loud, I was not going to use that word. Um, uh, shut up and go away and get along. Um, guys, listen to this, Tato. He says, uh, "Dead reckoning is not celestial navigation." Uh, <laughs> yes, it's really part of celestial navigation, man. It's called plotting. Wow. There's a full chapter on it in Book of Navigation. Yeah, um, we literally got him explaining Dead Reckoning now. With Celestial Navigation. Whether that works. Sphere. 
is LHA equals GHA plus easterly longitude. In this case, we're going to focus on the western hemisphere. So LHA is GHA minus longitude. Why do I need that? Well, again, we're kind of building a triangle here. <laughs> we're going to solve it in the next step. But in order to do that, I need to quantify my LHA. Right, I need to quantify my LHA. And so if I take my... Yeah, build that triangle that McTune says doesn't exist, mate. Go, build it for us. My GHA, which we determined in the last step, and I take my assumed longitude, I can come up with something, right? So our, our GHA from step two was uh, 122. Exactly, cocaine. Dead reckoning involves zero... What? It does involve zero... Oh. I'm reading it wrong. He says it doesn't involve stars or observation of stars. Uh, yes, it does. What is a GP of the star and GP of the North Pole and GP the dead reckoning of the person, the observer? They are all observed, you bloody idiot. Step one, measure the apparent altitude of the star. Without doing that, you can't get to do this okay the dead reckoning is just you plotting out to make sure you're keeping on the same course and to do that you have to take angular measurements to the star yeah like when when if when you've when you've um done two stars and you could be in a possible of two places well you, you could know one of them through your dead reckoning okay i want someone to do dead reckoning for me without knowing Without doing any sights. Please go ahead. Show me how you're going to do a dead reckoning without any sights. Mr. Andrew RG, if, you, if Flats is wrong in so many levels, show him where he's wrong. Tell him where he's wrong. Look, don't just say it. No, these idiots are telling me that you can do a dead reckoning without doing a sight. Yeah, again. Dead Reckoning is part of knowing your new location. The reason you do Dead Reckoning is to make sure you're on the same course still, cocaine. You get it? To know you're still going in the same course, you need to take a new observational measurement. You can't just all draw on a map. I see it is they're just trying to knock you off your game. Yeah, because look here. If you just had to take a plot on a sheet, and I'm not doing observations to make sure I'm keeping on that plot, how am I going to know where I was and where I'm going? You won't. To get your last location, you literally had to do a site reduction. This is the most idiotic thing I've ever heard from these people. No, I'm not angry and wrong. I'm just telling you what, you're an idiot. The guy even literally said, you need to observe this. Wow. If I'm so wrong, join the panel. Come, explain it to yeah. us. Explain how you can do a dead reckoning position without doing observation. Come. This should be very good. Waiting. Links at the top as always. So waiting. The link is right here. There's the link. Come. Come, hi, Pure yeah. Medicine, good to see you. So we're waiting for these people to come in. So you think they're gonna, do you think they're going to come in? Yeah. No, because they're just chat skanks. We need D. Rose's um, cricket sound, sound effects right now. <laughs> oh, there we go. You were angry and wrong. Cocaine just <laughs> literally uh, debunked his own self, guys. You can yeah. use your last fixed position from celestial navigation. <laughs> or just landmarks for dead reckoning so you literally made observational measurements to know where the hell you were and where you're going for effing sake you're a moron <laughs> this is why i get pissed off with these people and yeah i'm getting pissed off because the guy's so dumb he doesn't realize he literally just debunked his own self literally making my point in his own statement I think you're smoking too much of that cocaine. Thirty eight point three. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I agree with what Dean Bunner said there as well. And my DR longitude 
was 80 degrees west. <laughs> Observation of an island is in celestial navigation. Sorry, let's move back to what you said. From celestial navigation. Oh, wow. What a joke. Yeah, you're a joke, mate. You literally said yeah. from celestial I navigation. And I'll show you what a joke is when you're banned. <laughs> oh, wow. And by the way, landmarks are part of celestial navigation too, if you didn't realize that. It doesn't stop being Celestial Navigation. <sighs> West. <laughs> so GHA minus longitude will give me my LHA. Now here is where you need to make a... No, I don't think he will join because it's probably McToon's troll that. Soccer count. No, that. No, it's... It's either him or Sean Hawkins. Maybe it's that Critical decision about the process that you want to follow from here. So you can make... You can, <laughs> you can do a single dead reckoning without a single measurement to a star. Sorry, let's go back to what you just said earlier. Uh, you can use a last fixed position from celestial navigation. Would that require a star observation? Get with it, really, dude. Can do this problem in two different ways. If you no, I didn't say landmarks are celestial navigation. I just said it doesn't take away that it's celestial navigation. You still do celestial navigation till you get close enough to land to use the landmarks. Stop twisting my words. Well, they, they you try want to do direct calculations with your calculator using sines and cosines and solving this triangle manually with a calculator or with haversines or logarithm tables if you're old school. You can just uh, subtract these and LHA can be you know, an imprecise number. For example, if we did this um, math, 122, 30.3 minus 80 is gonna give us an LHA of 42 degrees, 30.3 minutes. That's my LHA. So I can yeah, this is LHA. You know, drawing a triangles again, guys. <clears throat> could file that away as a little piece of information that I use later, this precise angle. The other way to do it, if you're not gonna solve it directly with a calculator, but instead if you're gonna use tables, the most popular way to do it is, um, is to look in tables, and the tables are known as HO229 or HO249, just kind of uh, books that you can get for navigation, which we'll, we'll talk about in a minute. But if you're gonna use that book, Unfortunately, the LHA needs to be a whole number. It needs to be a whole number. But that's okay, right? Because our DR longitude was just some random spot that we were close to. It's not our exact longitude. We said it was 80. Mm -hmm. What if I said my DR was 8001? Would that make a difference? Not really, right? So our DR longitude can be any number that we want as long as it's close to our, our actual longitude, right? You can't pick something on the other side of the planet. <coughs> yeah, because you're just yeah. literally making sure you're following your course, that's all. And by the way, guys, when you're doing dead reckoning um, in the middle of the ocean, you need to sight the star. <laughs> I don't know how you're gonna sight an island or a landmark if you're in the middle of the ocean to do dead reckoning, correct? Sure. Yeah. Uh, I mean, think about ships that, let's say, travel for a month long. And uh, for that few weeks or whatever they're going, the, all they see is ocean and sky. And they're trying to plot their dead reckoning position. What landmarks are they using to do so? Oh, I know none but what are they using to make sure they know where they're going keeping on course ah taking a sight 
to a star this is how idiotic these people are they don't understand what the hell is going on that they want to project their ignorance onto other people yes Mokti the triangle is on the surface flat earth well done a horizontal triangle brilliant <laughs> so uh, if I have an estimated position of 80 degrees west and if I need a whole number of LHA to pop out of this in order to use the tables, well, I can just change my DR longitude. What if I said my DR longitude was 80, 30.3? What happens then? Well, my LHA is a whole number, 42 degrees. So um, when you assume your, your DR longitude you want to do it so that you result in a whole number of LHA mm -hmm. if you're going to use the tables. If you're doing it with direct calculation, you just subtract GHA minus longitude and you get your LHA. Again, why do we care about this? We're getting an angle for this triangle that we're building. So our LHA... I love that. Getting an angle for the triangle we're building. After McTune says <laughs> there's no triangles. Yeah. Uh -huh. Wow. Eight is going to be 42. We are going to use HO229 to solve this problem, um, but I will show you in a little annex about how to calculate this directly. So if you, if you like to do that directly, you can skip ahead to that point of the video. Remember, there's little timestamps down below that you can look at this. Uh, but for us, we've got an LHA of 42. What else do we need to do to build this triangle? Well we need to kind of assume where we were. We already did that for longitude. Our latitude is 32 north. So check, I've got that corner of the triangle locked down. I've got this corner of the triangle locked down, and I've got this corner of the triangle locked down. Okay, so um, when he's doing this dead reckoning, um, what's the GP of the sun here? Would, was that taken from a site? Hmm. What about when he looked at Polaris? Was that also taken from a site? Hmm. Weird. So not Celestial Navigation then? Hmm. As well. So I've built this triangle to go from there. Hmm. So the next step is going to be to actually solve that triangle using the tables in HO229. That can be a tricky process. So review everything that we've done so far before we kind of move on. But our next step is going to be step number four, solving the triangle. In this step of the process, we're going to solve this triangle. But before we get into the mechanics of it, I thought we could just review um, kind of the geometry of what's going on. When I say solve the triangle, we're going to take some information about this triangle that we built in step three, mm -hmm. and we're going to feed it into a calculator. Feed it into a calculator, okay. <laughs> uh, but Mactoon, read on screen here, what does it say? Solve triangle. Correct? Uh -huh. Okay. Well, oh yeah, we've still got to finish burning here. Uh, we got Polaris. And uh, we have to have the GP of the sun. Sun. And then we got the observer on the boat. Okay. This is horizontal, guys. So in other words, he sighted Polaris this way, and he sighted the sun this way to get the GP. So that means he's on a circle of equal altitude on this way. Now he's just trying to plot his position with the dead reckoning using the sight of Polaris and the sight of the sun. So he makes sure he's on the same course he was traveling. Flat Earth, guys. <coughs> Either we're going to do it directly ourselves by memorizing or looking up the formulas, or we're going to look in a publication for the values. Either way, we feed the computer, the calculator or the book, some information and it gives us the rest of it. So we are going to feed it the dead reckoning latitude, this value right here. Why that? It's not even part of the triangle, right? But the calculator and the formula and the book knows that if you have your latitude here, the complement of it 
is this leg right here, known as the co-latitude. Mm. So they, they don't make you solve that directly. They don't make you say 90 minus your latitude to get the co-latitude. They kind of do it in the calculator and in the formula. Well, you can just do it yourself. Yeah, 90 minus the co-altitude angle. <laughs> oh, I love it. Likewise, we're going to give it the declination. We're only going to give it the whole value of declination, though, because the book, the calculator, um, you know, it relies on whole values. If you are doing direct... Uh, no, Tata, not using a globe. A triangle is flat, mate. What's a triangle? Three straight lines mm. closing wow. to make an internal sum of 180 degrees, correct? Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You can't have a triangle with bent lines, okay? He's literally doing Euclidean geometry and calling it spherical geometry. So he's trying to change Euclidean geometry to non-Euclidean geometry. Ah, oh, in reality, that would be an American football almost. <laughs> uh, no, Google Earth doesn't use a globe. They actually use flat. Have you ever looked at the elevation angles of Google Earth, mate? Mr. Andrew, nobody blocked you. You got timed out. Yeah, it's as flat as yeah. a pancake. Just because they draw And they think that he stands for globe. Mm -hmm. Well, they Google Earth whistleblower come out and said it was flat. Mm -hmm. Geographical. Uh, Rect calculations by hand. You can. Exactly, as I meant, it's Cartesian. It's flat. Just type in the declination and it's going to be good. But again, this is the declination of the sun. That's not <laughs> Do I, what I, I laugh like George Lucas. <laughs> what? I don't even know how George Lucas laughs. Exactly, Vicky. Uh, Victor. Uh, if you look at Google Earth's uh, profile elevation, it's flat, not curved. Part of our triangle. But this is co-declination, the opposite, the complement of the declination. Mm. The formula, the book are smart enough to know if you tell it this, what you really mean is this. And finally, we're taking the LHA, the local hour angle from the calculation that we did in step number three. Mm. So if you think about it from geometry, think back to the lighthouse. If you know two sides and an angle or two angles and a side, you can get the rest of the results out of it. So we're, in essence, giving the calculator, the formula, or the book, this leg, this angle, and this leg right there. Mm. And it's going to spit back some other information out to us. All right, so that's the... Yeah, and that information is going to spit back to you is the distance from you to the GP of the sun. Well done. So flatter than... <laughs> theory behind it. If you're doing it by hand, by actual calculation with a calculator or with a haversine table or logarithm tables, great. You're just going to type in some stuff. If you're looking this up in HO229 or HO249, you're going to need to feed it latitude, declination, and LHA. It's going to spit back some results. What is it going to spit back? Well, it's going to spit back something known as HC or computed height. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? Well, it means that if you were sitting here with your sextant on your boat... Look how it draws it flat again, guys. <laughs> Ace, this is what I'm saying. It's literally flat, and then he wants to draw it on a globe. And when he has to explain it to you, he has to draw it flat again, because that's what it's based upon. And you observed the sun <laughs> up there in the sky that is your HO, your height observed. We did that way back in step one. But what the, what the calculator is going to tell you, the process is going to tell you, is it's it like, all right, yeah? you may have observed that. That's fine. But if you were actually at this position right there, if you were actually there based on the information you told me, you should have observed the sun at this angle, HC, a comp computed angle, exactly. Uh, thank you very much, Lumpy the Gaston Vacuum, for your five dollar super chat. Really, really in uh, appreciate the support, man. He says we need to do a fun with shapes class. <laughs> that wouldn't be a very long uh, class, would it? This is a circle. This is a square. 
<laughs> two dimensional means flat. <laughs> uh, for the grammar fool bits out there, I might take a, a bit of doing. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's crazy, yeah, Owen. You know it's a sphere because we have to calculate it flat. But thank you very much, Lampy, for your super chat. Really, really appreciate all the support, mate. You rock. Notice how he's drawing it flat, guys, and he's going to complete the triangle. Puted yeah. angle. Wow. So clearly there's a difference, right? So that means clearly you're not at that spot. And that's how we navigate. We compare something that we calculated to something that we observed, and we can work out the difference and use that to our advantage. And w you know what this is, guys? Showing that what we observed was based on optical measurement, correct, guys? Mm -hmm. so not the yeah. actual height of the star or the sun it's an apparent altitude angle uh-oh so don't be discouraged if your numbers don't necessarily work out or if there's a difference between these two the difference should be small but it should be real so a computed height is what the what the formula what the book says is like all right if you were actually in this triangle, if you were actually at that corner of the triangle, you should have observed the sun at this particular angle, this computed height. Later, we're gonna compare it and go from there. The other thing that the formula is gonna give you is uh, azimuth. Mm. Remember way back when we talked about bearings to a lighthouse using a compass? Well, in celestial terms, the word azimuth is a bearing. So if I was taking an observation Notice, guys, remember azimuthal plane? <clears throat> so look how he's holding that compass flat over azimuthal plane, guys, to get his bearing. Yep. ...of the sun, I should see it at a particular bearing or a particular azimuth. So the computer or the formula or the book is, in essence, telling you this angle, Z, for azimuth. Now, again, we have to tweak the, the formulas a little bit to make it work, because technically they're giving you this angle right there. But, uh, but the point is, if you give it two sides and an angle, it's going to give you back some other information. It's going to give you this azimuth angle, and it's going to give you kind of this leg of the triangle, so that you can then go and plot it on a chart and figure out the difference between what you observed and what you measured to help you navigate. We'll do that in step five. But first, let's kind of go over the math of uh, solving this triangle using both the, the manual calculations and the table HO229. So, we so we're going to solve a triangle using, oh, what's that? Sakatoa cosines. We've worked very hard to build this triangle and okay, we've given cosines. some information to the calculator or to the tables Cause, yeah. and we're expecting some information back. We're expecting a computed height and a bearing or an azimuth to it. In other words, a distance and an angle down this bottom part of the triangle. If you are interested in the direct calculations, it's less commonly done, but it is pretty quick. And in this case, we're just going to take a formula. The sine of the computed height is equal to the sine of the latitude times the sine of the declination. And by the way, don't forget that you're going to do the entire declination, not just the, the whole mm -hmm. value. Plus the cosine of the latitude, the cosine of the declination, and the cosine of the LHA. And again, you're doing the entire LHA, not just the whole number, if you refer back to what we talked about then. Likewise, the Z, the azimuth, the angle. Uh, Lumpy Gas Vacuum, thank you very much for another $5 super chat. Really, really appreciate it. it. says, we need to do a fun with shapes class. You, you already said that, mate. Yeah, you, did, you, <laughs> you just sent another <laughs> super chat saying the same thing. Um, well, thank you very much. I really, really appreciate it. Well, we are yeah, having fun with shapes class because the guy's explaining triangles and having a category error by showing them curved. <laughs> Triangles are used in dead reckoning, but not in celestial navigation. Oh, shame. Again, your dead reckoning relies on celestial navigation. Um, and by the way, those angle measurements, those computed angles, come from your measurements to the celestial uh, objects. What is wrong with these people? He literally is talking about an angle that you measured in the sky. And saying it's got nothing to do with celestial navigation. 
Oh, wow. Angle is equal to the sine of the declination minus the sine of the latitude times the sine of the computed height all divided by the cosine of the latitude times the cosine of the computed height. It doesn't take that long to actually type this stuff in if you know how to use your calculator, and it's gonna result in an angle of 265.5. So that's telling us that 265.5 degrees, and we should have seen the sun at 50 degrees, 57.5. If we did, we're exactly at that spot. If we didn't, we have to make a correction. Mm -hmm. The more common way of doing these is using the tables using the tables. And we're going to use table HO229 for this. It's a perpetual table. You can download it or you can uh, have a copy of it if you want. And we're going to take this information right here, dead reckoning latitude of 32, declination of 21. And we're going to kind of ignore that leftover for now, but we'll have to come back to it later. And the LHA of 42, we're going to give that to the calculator, to the book, and it's going to give us something back. Likewise, if we're using the tables, HO229, we give it those three pieces of information. We give it an LHA of 42. We give it a latitude of 32. And we give it a declination of 21. It spits out some information. 5106, yeah. It spits out a computed height of 5106.1 and a computed azimuth of 95.8 in there, as well as a little D number. Mm. That D number is, uh, is just a correction factor. It's yeah, it's just a correction factor for the declination. It's 25.2 mm. if you wanted to, to write that down as well. So what do we do with that information? Well, it's different than the direct calculations because uh, we fed <clears throat> different information into the computer, this book, right? We gave it a whole value of declination and a whole value of LHA. Both had the whole value of latitude, but that's fine. So that's why there's a difference between the tabulated value and the, uh, the direct computed value. You're going to do one or the other. You're either going to do the tables or the direct calculation. Mm -hmm. A couple of notes. Uh, triangles work the same way right side up as they do upside down. <laughs> exactly. Where are that works? Why is that, guys? Why would it work right side up and upside down? Doesn't matter which orientation you make it. Because an angle is an angle. It's always two straight yeah. lines meeting at a vertex, correct? So if you got that triangle with an internal sum of 180, it's always going to show the same true values, no matter your orientation. If it's a curve, it can't be a triangle and it cannot give an angular measurement. I see we're running out of time. Oh. Yeah, I saw that. You know, I actually wanted to... Uh to, to, to ask you what you think about this guy's video if we had time but I don't think we do but you know I'll, I'll just write it in the chat I found it interesting so and, and you are the you're Christians in here so that's why I wanted you guys to 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 to, to kind of comment on that video I'll comment straight away on the title what's sure. it I don't I don't agree with people predicting dates for things Oh, 30 days no, of tribulation. But he seems pretty, you know, he, he seems like he really thinks he, he got this, uh, you know, no. figured out, you know. If tribulation starts in 30 days, some people need to do some praying. Oh, yeah. yeah. But, yeah. but I mean, you're not going to know. I mean, people have been saying we're in tribulation how many times already, or it's going to be started. Nobody will know the Nobody day. Nobody really yeah. knows. We're just going to see all of a sudden we are there. Exactly. Yeah. No, he, he, also says that. he also says that, uh, you know, he, he, he can't be sure, but he has two kinds of calculations he uses. He's not sure if it's this or that, and he's not completely sure, but he feels like, you know, kind of like that, you know? Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to know what you guys thought about what he says in it. You know, I'll and, watch you know, it and I'll get back to you. Yeah. Hey, Gary's in. When did you pop yeah, in, mate? Oh, okay. Just <laughs> okay, guys, unfortunately, I'm going to have to stop the show. So you guys are going to have to give your closing statements. Sorry about the short show today, but power's going off. And uh, that sucks. Hmm. I think we spent, I think we spent half, half of the, half the time taming out and banning people. It's troll, it was troll crazy, you know. But, um, but yeah, it's just... Yeah. It's the same, isn't it? Yeah, but I mean, they, they, this 
celestial navigation um how can i put it the celestial navigation thing really does piss off a lot of people it obviously does it's it, yeah. it's it really shows the true people because the people we've been getting flat earthers saying oh if you talk about celestial navigation you're just a shill it mm. doesn't prove <laughs> flat earth it's like what the hell are you talking about it's only flat earth but even in the second part like just like the first part the only time there was problems is when he was um diagramming the globe part you know what i mean mm -hmm. when it was flat perfect uh tata i'm not triggered at all i don't know what you're talking about <laughs> my power is like yeah my power is going off in a few minutes uh that's how it goes because in mm. south africa we have a corrupt government that rather doesn't uh put the money into infrastructure and uses it to buy fancy cars and vacations and parties and stuff. You know, that's more important than actually having infrastructure for people. Wow. Yeah. He, 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 he finishes pretty much the same time every night. So <laughs> it's just something to try and get up your nose. You know what I mean? Idiots. My country's not far behind. Mm. Oh, you guys also getting there. Yeah. It's, yeah, but what I mean, what are we gonna do? It's all part of the economic crash. That's what. They, what do you think they want to happen? Well, they have to let it. everything crash so we can have a one-world government system, guys. Listen, yeah. all these ballers who think they're smart coming here, Charlie, and talking shit. They've got some hard times coming that way, and they don't even know. That's right. They wanna hook you all up to the smart grid. Yeah. The, the the wireless shit that's gonna fucking fry you every day, man. <laughs> you yeah, well, you're, you're not gonna know yeah. you're really living, are you? Hmm. I hear they have like 14 cities now in the U.S. that uh, are gonna try to ban meat mm. and uh, personal mm. personal cars, and uh, there was something else by 2030. I love the banning meat part. That should be done, <laughs> but you know, people should no. for real. Just, you know, people should. <laughs> transition out of it themselves that would be the most right way but it is good for for the world and our our bodies you know if we look Pro at it scientifically protein good protein good yeah protein i'll take, is not I'll take a steak any day over any vegetable <laughs> <laughs> i've been living without meat for oh, yeah. almost nine years now i don't eat meat and i'm not i'm not lacking anything so you know rocks. it depends how you i mean yeah. come on biltong rocks i think in america you guys call it beef jerky yeah, I like it. I, mm. I remember. Hey, Discord, didn't you say you were sick today? It's, it's not that I didn't like the taste of it. I just don't want to do it. You know, I don't see a reason to, you know, and it, it doesn't benefit me in any way anyway. I'm yeah, healthier it, now, so yeah, you know, yeah. it just depends how you do it. Yeah, so, so while we, we chew the, the, the meat, you're going to chew the, the olive branches. Nah, not exactly, but you know. <laughs> I'm just joking. No. But yeah, guys, I have to end the show, unfortunately. <laughs> I just see it's a paradigm that um, he's got a generator. So still being a cheeky so and so. Yeah, yeah, yeah they just don't, don't get that budget, huh? I got a generator, I just don't have petrol in the generator right now, okay? Waiting for my pay to come in. It should have been in yeah. today and it didn't. I literally use my get credit. That, get that diesel generator too, man. Get that diesel backup system. So you can use your spill and your your food oils and stuff. For what it costs for a decent diesel generator, I might as well just go full solar. Mm. Oh, yeah, you know, go find some old diesel car, crack that motor out, you know. And <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys, I'm just gonna say thank you all for coming. Really, really appreciate everybody being here. Um, tomorrow night, I'm probably so far. It still looks like that debate is on with uh, Bev. Try thinking. What, what kind of question is that there? It's got nothing to do with you, whether he does or doesn't. Maybe but he don't. Does. But he doesn't. No. Theta, Theta doesn't even know what if he's coming or going, so it doesn't even bother about him. Uh, so yeah, guys, I'll see you guys all tomorrow night for the debate, and if there's no debate, we'll carry on with this. We'll have a good night. Yeah, we'll see you guys all. all. You. Thanks all for coming. Sorry about the um, very quick show but at least there was a show but yeah i appreciate everybody's support please hit the likes if you haven't already and share the show oh and by the way guys the votes ended with 137 votes using flat earth to explain celestial navigation is a car concession for flat earth 42 percent say yes and no 58 percent 
So I'll see you guys all tomorrow. Many, many blessings. May the pressure be with you. Cheers.